I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, we're going to establish a quorum. Um, Tony Rodriguez? Present. Um, Kathy Ehlers? Present. Cynthia Rivas Mendes is present. Um, today is Tuesday, December 5th, and we're starting at 6 10 p.m. at the Arnone Elementary School. In addition to attending, the public can view this meeting via television on Comcast Channel 08 and 107 One HD version and online via this link, um, www.youtube.com slash the Brockton Channels. Um, the agenda today is we're going to have a presenter, um, Dr. Um, Renee Haywood, doctor, <laughs> who's the our assistant superintendent of equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, we'll talk a little bit of our DREI mission, um, our EDI training policy, and then we'll have um, Dr. Haywood talk about the past, present, and future of the EDI office. We'll have other business in adjournment. So to start this meeting, I have a rough draft of just why the Diversity, Race, Equity, and Inclusion Subcommittee started. That should be the page I just gave you. Again, this is a rough draft. I'll make sure to have it concrete before the end of this year. Um, a lot of this um, was also um, influenced by the vision and mission of our EDI office. So the idea of the subcommittee, I'll read about it, but it's also to be able to support the EDI office as well. So I'll, I'll read what I have. The Diversity, Race, Equity, Inclusion Subcommittee was initially formed in 2020 on the basis of the need of the district before the EDI office was built. This subcommittee is committed to making sure all voices in their stories are heard, especially those that are least represented and have been historically underrepresented and marginalized, and to make sure these voices are part of the decision-making process. It is important to recognize the work and contribution of our white allies among us and how important their collaborative partnership is for this work. So our vision of this subcommittee is to make sure the the district continues to understand, empathize, and solve issues related to equity and diversity. Our mission is to move forward with a urgency, purpose to create and sustain a more equitable, diverse, and inclusive school district that is reflected in our policies, our practices, our workspaces, in professional development, and our curriculum. The guiding principles are very, very similar to our EDI office. I just wanted to add race, which I will be adding. I, it's empty right now if you see it. Um, and then similar to our Office of Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion, there's four focuses here. And you're going to see those same focuses on the policy that we're going to talk about today. So area one, um, a huge one that we've talked about in the past. And unfortunately, um, that hasn't been the case the last time we pink slipped, but the idea is to continue to support the district in increasing recruitment and retention of more diverse educators and staff that are representative of our, our student body. The second one is to improve the school climate by embedding policies that will support students, educators, and staff to best achieve their academic, social, emotional, and professional goals. Number three is to provide professional development for us, the school committee members, on an annual basis that gives them the tools to center equity in policy, practices, and decision making. As many of you guys know, this training has been provided in the past by Manuel J. Fernandez, who's the founder president of Mandy's group and Amina Pilgrim. And then our last um, area is to support the district in developing decolonized curricular instructional resources that promote practices that recenter transfer transformational teaching and healing to meet all students where they are. Again, this is a rough draft. I'll make sure to have this concrete. Is there, are there any questions or suggestions on what we have? No, I think the only comment that I would make in our defense is we really do want to increase recruitment you know, the way it should be increased. But unfortunately, when you have layoffs, it's a very prescriptive process of how we can lay off. Mm -hmm. And so, unfortunately, for lack of a better phrase, you throw the baby out with the bathwater. We, we lost a, a lot of really great individuals um, in the layoff. But I just, I think I want the public to understand that that's not a choice. That's, there's a very prescriptive way that that has to be done. Um. 
Yes, I completely agree with you. And just to add to what you're saying, I just think when we do decision makings, we just have to think about the whole picture. Mm -hmm. I think when we made our decision last year, to, I hold myself accountable through my reflections. We, we thought this is the route, right? Yep. Versus we didn't really look at other options. Yep. And I think with that, with this particular experience, now we understand how important it is to pause, step back, you know, like it's great that the superintendent can give us their suggestion, but at the end of the day, we got to make sure that we look at the full picture. Agreed. Yeah. Any, I mean, I hate when people call me out, so I'm not even going to do that, but any other questions or <laughs> concerns? <laughs> no. All good. All right. So then the policy, um, so Sarah Spatter for our, um, attorney was able to give me one that she adopted from a district. If you see, there's two copies. So the one in blue is the one that I looked at to be able to adapt to our district from the work that we have, that personally I have seen. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you, wanna, if you want me to read it for the record, I could, but I know that Dr. Haywood has spoken to me that she really she really believes that equity should be in the forefront, so it's EDI, not DEI, and that's why I made sure to um, edit it in that way. So I could read the policy, and this policy, hopefully we can recommend it to the whole school committee to ideally pass it before the end of this year. So the wording is, the Brockton School District is committed to embedding equity, diversity, inclusion, and anti-racism in all aspects of education and learning for our students, our faculty, staff, and community. This should be done in adherence to all other relevant policies. There are three complementary components necessary to achieve these goals, professional development, experiences, and curriculum. It is important that each of these occurs as an ongoing and continuous learning practice. I think it's important to note that it's ongoing and continuous learning because this is something that we should continuously do reflection in, um, especially as we make decisions, just because we're, we're humans, we're never gonna get it right, but if we continuously are doing the work and not, not make it seem as just a check box, then that's the purpose of the work. Um, so through professional development, the district must provide professional development, discussion, and self-directed learning on equity, diversity, inclusion, anti-racism, anti and other difficult conversation training to all faculty, staff, administration, and the school committee. This training, specifically for the school committee, is on a continuous learning path by an external provider when necessary or by the Brockton Public Schools EDI office and, she, and should be given at least once a year. Um, so because it's a training that we have, I did put once a year, but again, it should be an ongoing and continuous learning pra practice. The reason why I put at least once a year is just because there's just so much that we know that gets in the way, so at least we're held accountable to have that training at least once a year. But that doesn't mean that it's only once a year. Let me know if that wording is not clear on I, that. I just have a question. Is this, you know, we had the formal training with, um, Is it Manuela? Yeah, Manuel Fernando. Oh, yeah. yeah. So when we had that, for, is that what this is? That formal training, or is this diff, Is this what we'll get training from the EDI office to support Manuel's training? So either it will be a continuous path. So ideally, we would get an external, mm -hmm. and then when needed, the EDI office will support any other training we need. Um, that I'm not sure if you guys feel could be conflict of interest sometimes or how you feel, but I think it would be great to still have their support in things that might be needed. No, I, I was gonna say, I think that we should have a formal training by an external provider like Manuel every single legislative session at the very least. And then I think that EDI and Dr. Haywood's group can support any changes or any updates, things that we should know about, that should definitely be on an ongoing basis as well. I think, I think the policy, policy should reflect both, just in case one slips through the cracks and the other one. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I would rather have it in writing so that with every new turnover in legislation, we all have to go through the same formal training again, and then, and then we get continuous updates of learning and you know, ongoing support with anything that's changing. 
Do you mind repeating those two points, please? Sure. So I would say have a formal training by Manuel and, or whoever's an external party for each legislative turnover every session. So if, at the very least, every two years, the whole school committee is getting formal training on equity, diversity, inclusion. And then the second piece would be the support that Dr. Haywood's department can do with EDI within that time frame and in addition to that formal training to ensure that we're capturing everything. And we're, and we're constantly focusing on this with every decision we make. Mm -hmm. So like one, one way that I see the support of the EDI office is every year they do the ACT conference. Mm -hmm. um, is, is that something that we, like we should yeah. entertain to be part of that and maybe they do a session that is specifically for school committee members or school committee members choose from the different trainings that are given. Um, I know that's all day, November, mm -hmm. usually election day, so that could be tough, but. Um, that, that would be tough. Um, you know, I know I spent the whole day up there, but I think it should be, you know, like some type of um, phased out process, not like forcing like this one whole big day mm -hmm. um, to have people take uh, some training. So I think it should be, you know, phased out pre throughout the whole district because it's not just, you know, you have your faculty staff, but you still have your transportation department mm -hmm. and so forth across the district to, uh, to make sure that we get this, uh, to get the training. But just to piggyback, like when you say in, in the session, so you mean as far as the school committee getting it that one time per term or is it we doing this every year? I think uh, at I'm the very least it should be for each legislative term. Okay. Like so, every time we have a new election, whether you're reelected or not, everybody gets a refresher or they're hearing it for the first time. Yeah, I, I think that's, like re, that's the reality of it, right? That, because two years happen so quickly as we know. Yeah. I ideally think it should be annually. Um, I don't know if that's going to be a big push, like a big pushback from the school committee or if, you know, just because we have other things, but I do think um, even if it's asynchronous learning, I think it's really important to be annually just because that work is, if you're not doing it, I, what I find is that people that are not actually doing it on their own need that structure mm -hmm. and it's just important to like where are we going and I know Dr. Hewitt will talk about the EDI office but in regards to us decision making and policies I just think in order to be reflective it's always important to have as you know I know you have yeah. sent me a few of your yeah. job that does that structure so that's the only pushback I personally have but I do understand when we talk about visibility and like other things that we have on our plate every two years could be more um, I, I, I agree with you on the yearly basis because things change. Um, the, you know, something can happen um, mm -hmm. dramatically, and we have to make sure that you know we adapt to those changes. It's just like uh, going to school. You know, the school committee, you know, curriculums change year after year yep. after year. So I think you know we have to be the leaders to make sure that we show that we're getting the, these training as well as the staff. Exactly the the examples. I, um, I think that's a good point, Mr. Rodriguez, because th the one thing I was going to say is I have no problem with it being annually. I would just want to make sure that every time we have the training, it's on new topics or additional topics so that we're constantly learning and it's just not a repeat of what we had received the year prior. And we've all been to conferences like that where you're like, okay, I've heard this before. That's the only thing because of lives are busy, but with how things are changing, you know, we've got to be able to respond quickly. So I don't disagree with it. I'm just trying to be realistic with time and meetings and everything else. Yeah, and I think the mass, they're really on top of this. Like when I went to the mass and mass conference this year, I mean, this was a huge talk of like culturally responsive, equity, diversity, inclusion um, practices. So I think like even being able to talk to other districts, like what are they using mm -hmm. would be because the idea is to expand out as mm -hmm. well. So when we think about our external, um, our external parties, it doesn't always have to be the same parties because every party is going to give a different perspective. Um, so that's something to think about for sure. Yeah, good point. But in regards to the wording, um, we could put it as annually because it holds us accountable to keep that, or we could we could um, do it biannually. I would just um, leave it annually. Um, oh. We all know things happen, and we could always yeah 
um, it's all on schedule. And so I think annually is, you know, best suited. Yeah, I think if we put annually, at least we'll try to make it annually. And to Mr. Rodriguez's point, if something comes up, something comes up. But at least if we have it annually, we're making an effort for it to be once a year at the very least. I'm good with that. Thank you. Um, and then that's the professional development part. Experiences, the district must provide our school community with the experience necessary to be aware, thoughtful, and active global citizens who are prepared to recognize and promote equity, diversity, inclusion, and anti-racism. The district must ensure that these experiences foster an understanding of the repercussions of discrimination, oppression, and bias, respect and celebrate differences and strive towards the creation of equitable and just systems. Any questions on that? No. I'm just gonna, sorry, I'm just going to bring up my... Um, and then um, for curriculum, the district's curriculum and activities must be holistically represent the world's many perspectives and voices, including the work, lives, and contributions of various marginalized identity, such as BIPOC, BIPOC um, defined as black, indigenous, people of color, LGBTQ plus community, which is lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, cure, queer, questioning plus, women, diversely abled, age and developmentally appropriate, and et cetera, in various fields such as STEAM. STEAM means science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Business, government, arts, literature, music, sports, activism, and more, and must be informed by pedagogy experts in equity, diversity, inclusion, and anti-racism, and include the history of oppression, injustice, resistance, and counter-resistance, education, activism, and legislation, as well as current systems of privilege and power. I underlined because I loved the part and must be informed by pedagogy experts. I think that's really important. So any questions or concerns on the experiences and curriculum part of this policy? No, except that we're gonna we're gonna change the title. Are we gonna put equity first? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So is the title of this okay? It's right now currently is equity, diversity, inclusion, and anti-racism policy. Yeah. I'll make sure that our suggestions are noted. So then in our next school committee, um, I want to just recommend it to the whole school committee. Do we need to recommend it to policy subcommittee before the whole school committee? No, because there's a three-part process. So there's the discussion, mm -hmm. which is to the whole committee, and then there's the vote. So that means we have to do the policy mm -hmm. then? Um, um, yes. Not necessarily. Yeah, I don't so think so. So we could actually, um, because the policy is a committee of a whole, yeah. we can actually um, suspend the rules and adopt this whenever we feel like it is if we want it we can have all three in one meeting exactly okay. I was like it is all of us already I mean the, so the, we can the do proper it. way is as yeah um, Kathy stated that you know you have to have when we deal with other policies but you know we have the authority to suspend those rules and, and act this policy as a committee of a whole at any time we want so should we get a motion to vote for the policy and the purpose of the DREI subcommittee so do on the on these changes these are duly noted that you took the notes that we're going to change equity prior yeah. to diversity and uh which other language did the the, from annually, the annually to to yearly yeah and okay. it's also noted by lisa on the minutes okay so i can always refer back to that okay so do we want to um have this enacted at the next regular school committee meeting, which is at seven, or do we want to wait till the following um, On meeting the to actually um, impose it? I would make the suggestion to um, have this at our next regular schedule, where we, you know we st we have members that are out of state. Uh, I believe Mr. Sullivan is in Florida, yeah. and Joyce is at a conference, and I'm not sure if the mayor is. The mayor's not here tonight he's not either. Here to, so just to give them the opportunity to. Mm -hmm. to voice their um, opinions as yeah. well and take a vote. I don't think it's going to fail. 
Um, yeah. I'm confident in that. <laughs> so I, I would you know, just hold off on taking a formal vote to this evening and put it off to Onega, which is the, the 12th 18th. or the 18th? The 18th. The 18th. Is it the uh, 18th or the 19th? The 19th. Oh, the 19th. Yeah. Sorry, it's the 19th, it's and, the and it's earlier. Sorry. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so that would be my, uh, yeah, I agree. my recommendation on that. OK, perfect. So can we, someone? Motion to approve all of the edits, the change of the um, title to put equity first, and all of the notes that we have discussed in the three areas, the three complementary components of professional development experiences and curriculum. Properly seconded by Mr. Rodriguez. All in favor? Thank you. All right, that was properly passed. Um, next in our agenda, we have the discussion of the past, present, and future of our EDI office by Dr. Renee Hayward. Good evening. Good evening. Um, just waiting for the PowerPoint to be queued up. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for having me, uh, giving me this opportunity to just kind of wrap things up um, uh, for before the end of the regular calendar school year. But EDI, um, then, now, and tomorrow, um, I, I kind of pulled everything together so there's not going to be a whole section for then, now, and tomorrow, um, just in the essence of time because there are two presentations I'm making tonight. Um, but the foundation of the work, um, you have seen all of this before, um, but it's just kind of pulling it all together. Uh, the mission to be a leader in this work, um, the vision to move forward with urgency, uh, and then our three focus areas. So whatever we're doing is connecting to that. Uh, and then the proficiency commitment. Um, you have seen this on you know, our brand's equity is proficiency, uh, and the EDI office is committed to leading the efforts to build a more representative, equitable, and inclusive school district that fosters positive student outcomes. So the end result is always going to be positive student outcomes, uh, and with that um, is you know, all the support um, that is embedded in the vision, mission, and the focus areas. Uh, again, the work here, there's a lot to talk about, and so I, we just don't have the time, so I'm just doing bullet items here. But for the most part, this is, if you wanted to just have one slide of what the work is, professional development, family and community engagement, student engagement, capacity building, affinity spaces and support, partnerships with other departments, curriculum and resource development, leadership development, and culture and climate. And I've probably forgotten some, but um, that at least gives you a peek of what the work is. It has evolved over the years since 2021, um, and uh, yeah, it's evolved. <laughs> this is a lot of um, uh, words on here, and I know that you have copies of you know this PowerPoint presentation. Um, but you know we're really focusing on the why. The why is um, again the student results, right? We want to have positive student results uh, and we have to be intentional about bringing change um, so that we can move our students forward. And there are inequities that are connected to race, culture, economic status, and other markers that have persisted at all levels of our society and at BPS as a system in society uh, and is carried and reproduced many of these biases. So all of us have them. We reproduce them, we um, keep them, <laughs> and this work is really about addressing them, acknowledging uh, them so that we can um, create a, a, an environment that is optimal for learning for our students. And then the what, that first um, slide that I mentioned that does talk about the what. I did some work with um, Colin Rose. He is a, um, a DESE consultant. And so this slide and the previous slide is something that he and I worked on. Um, but the what, uh, because the work has expanded, and I think that because it's so new, I think EDI, especially in schools, has popped up probably um, over the last five years. 
um, but really strongly over the last two or three years. And school districts are still adding positions, expanding offices, or creating an office, so that work is still ongoing. Uh, but there's a system-wide strategic and partnership um, and oversight uh, that is part of the work. So I am embedded in teaching and learning, but there's also um, an oversight of district-wide activities, taking a look at hiring practices, um, you know, how do we share resources, et cetera. So that is the next level work that needs to be done. Uh, and then capacity building is really what we've been focusing on. Um, cultural responsive practices, of course, and that, you know, I mean, schools have been talking about cultural responsive practice for a while, but this, again, is being very intentional um, so that the work can continue in the building, because right now, uh, there are two um, of us, myself and Mr. Williams, who are 100% dedicated to EDI work, and then we have Dr. Soraya Presme Kalix, who um, brings the parent engagement piece to the work, uh, and we don't have our, our student, um, you know, uh, specialist, and so, and curriculum development. So that, that work was supposed to be built out, but of course finances, um, he and I are doing the bulk of the work and partnering uh, and using the expertise that Dr. Presme Calix comes with as well. Um, so we're making do, but um, there's a lot of work that could be done um, if we had the resources. So um, one of the main uh, things that we do, we provide resources. Um, there are links, and if you don't have the electronic version, I can make sure that you get it of this presentation, because then you will see the table of contents, uh, that top right of the elementary school EDI starter kits. So all of the elementary and middle schools were gifted um, an EDI starter kit, uh, which includes books and resources. By I think it's the end of this week or next week, we'll have we will have um, delivered all of them. Uh, we took a pause around the conference time uh, because we just needed to do that. Um, but you'll see the amazing uh, books that um, the schools received. Uh, we were able to share them with students and the administrative staff, and really start um, talking about how they were going to use it, so they had to talk about it instead of us telling them how they should use it. Um, if they struggled a little bit, we gave them some ideas, but really it's about their ownership of these books. So if you look on the left, there's pictures there, but again, we'll send you the uh, table of contents that will highlight um, the subject. So it could be Native American stories, and then there'll be a quick blurb about what the book is about. Um, and on the left are pictures of those books. And so schools are getting at least four copies of each book. Uh, and so they may be doing projects um, with those books throughout the year and not just you know, focusing um, black literature during Black History Month, the Native American literature during Native, you know, this is, it should be an ongoing thing because uh, we are preparing ourselves, our kids for uh, global society. And then that second um, link there on the top uh, right, is the EDI, um, it's a SharePoint, and so since you all have BPS uh, emails, you are able to access that. It is, um, I designed this uh, probably about a year ago um, for um, a place where we can put all of the resources, uh, so it's continuing to be built out, um, but instead of looking for your email or where's the shared fo file, file or folder, it's, it's in there. Um, and there's a way to sign up for classes, et cetera. But again, some are live, some pieces are live and some are not, as we have certain things available at this time. Uh, let's see here, and the books that we purchased, um, they were funded by an equitable design grant uh, in partnership with the bilingual department, um, and we purchased them from a black-owned company uh, because we understand that that is important. So the ACT conference, um, you all heard about this, uh, I think, at the last school committee meeting. Um, you know, this provides district PD, district-wide PD for all of our employees, minus a few that Mr. Rodriguez mentioned, and so we will be getting to those groups as well um, during this year, so uh, that is the plan. Um, 
it has evolved and turned into a major deal, <laughs> which is great. Um, we started off as something virtual, just kind of introducing what EDI is all about and then the different terms, et cetera, um, to just give a, you know, a foundation for the work. And then um, year two, last year, uh, we had our first in-person conference. Um, and so we have seen the shift last year to this year from um, 60 workshops to 75 workshops, um, pop-up restaurants. Uh, we are recognized by DESE um, and it has become a Brockton brand. Uh, people are talking about this conference. Um, they ask us about it uh, before we're even able to you know, uh, brag about it. So they already know, which is great. Um, and the future of the ACT conference, because this is um, a large endeavor, and I have no idea how this was done by the EDI office. Um, we had some extra help with our admins in the uh, in central office, which was great. Um, we're really going to need um, more hands on deck. We've already strategized a little bit, and we're going to do a bigger debrief with, um, I think it might be this week, um, with a larger group just to see how we can tweak this a little bit. But um, we need a, a better way to um, register folks because there are folks that don't register at all, and then that could be a 1,000 people that my office has to sort by hand. That is an, uh, a huge undertaking, um, and we have to find a better way to do that. Uh, and then there are also external folks that would be willing to pay to come um, and attend, and that would defray a lot of our costs if we were able to handle that capacity. So um, that is the future of the ACT conference. ACT uh, restaurants, so this is what was happening inside the building for those of you who weren't able to see. And then outside the building we had food trucks and it was um, such a great event, um, it has nothing to do with me, it was really about the, the spirit and the excitement of the folks who were attending. I saw smiles and laughter and um, and, and just wonder about, wow, this is a really great day. Uh, for those who missed it, you know, um, hopefully they'll come next year, uh, but I'm really um, glad that these folks had the experience. All right, this is also something that we do, so I'm really just highlighting a few things. We started off kind of as um, people wanted more after last year's conference. They wanted to learn more. So we had introduction to uh, equity, diversity, inclusion, and belonging. Uh, it was an eight-week course, um, six or eight-week course, uh, open to all educator staff, so whoever wanted to sign up for it. And it focused on the fundamentals of equity, diversity, inclusion, and belonging. Uh, it also used the um, glossary that um, Darnell and uh, his folks uh, created um, to give language to um, this work. So it was a really great experience. I was able to um, sit in on um, the, the class and some of the presentations as they talked about their identity and cultural journey. The next class, uh, what if I say the wrong thing? So as I was sitting in the first class, that was um, some of the concern as we do this EDI work. I want to do this, but I'm afraid I'm going to say the wrong thing. So uh, I happened to find a book that was called What If I Say the Wrong Thing um, and had a five-week course uh, with um, you know, folks from special education, nursing, paraprofessional, administrators, et cetera. Uh, all of these classes are open up to whoever wants to attend. Um, and so we were able to really dig into um, biases and how they affect what we do and what we say. Uh, and there were, there were videos um, embedded in that, uh, and I think it really helped folks to establish cultural responsive habits. Um, because, you know, we've lived and we're all adults and we've established some, some unhealthy habits. And so it takes a while in education to unlearn those and then learn new, um, new habits. Uh, another um, thing that we do is creating positive culture and climate. So um, I think that that's kind of a theme of the office, really, is to help people feel welcome and that they belong and that we want to partner with them. And so here's a few pictures. Um, we connected the central office staff with community members just um, ha to have some coffee and pastries and um, start to break down some barriers. 
uh, between the two. Um, we are out there supporting community events uh, and partnering with others. I was able to partner with Amir from the mayor's office to do a training um, for Diversity Day at the Brockton VA. Um, and so those are the kinds of partnerships that's beyond the walls of our district. Um, it's really, there's a, a public out there that is looking at the work um, and wanting to connect. Uh, and so that is a benefit for us um, publicly. Uh, and also internally, we collaborate with, um, we're, we have a really great relationship with the PD uh, director, bilingual, um, and human resources. We partner, and I'll just talk about um, the course at the end of this. We were very fortunate um, to have the funds from Equitable Design. It was a grant that they gave us uh, for summer interns. And so this is a picture of our interns and their siblings. Uh, they helped us design the ACT Conference booklet. Uh, they organized all of the EDI starter kits. Um, they were the ones that you know, did some follow up with student ambassadors who were interested in the program. And they also received training from Mr. Williams in restorative circles. And um, that was life changing. Um, we would like to have funding to continue this program for high school students. That grant um, has run out. Uh, and one of our graduates is attending Harvard University and said that the EDI glossary and the training he received with us has given him an extra edge. And so that's what we're, we're doing. We have to prepare our kids to have conversations um, at high levels. And I'm glad that he has that to say uh, because that's, that's what we're supposed to be doing, preparing our kids uh, when they leave us. Family engagement. Um, this is Dr. Presme Clicks's work, um, and the mission is there, um, and it's you know really focusing on being culturally sensitive uh, and connecting with the families where they are instead of always having them um, kind of mold into what we want them to be. We need to meet them where they are so that we can have a partnership together. And then uh, family engagement thrives on collaboration. So if you look on the right, there's a framework that, that uh, Dr. Presme Calix um, uh, created. Uh, and it has some really great um, foundational uh, phrases there. You know, trust, community, home, student success, co-leaders, co-designs, equity partnership. Um, there's an expertise that our families have and there's experience that they have. We need to have dialogue, two-way dialogue, and not just us telling them what um, we need them to do. Um, and there's a partnership that we need to be building. Uh, and then there's intentional and personal and culturally, um, culturally sensitive, like I mentioned. So that is the framework. And if you look there, um, part of the work is, and again, it's always part of the work, there's just not enough time to talk about the extent of the work, but school culture is um, one of the major focuses. Uh, as an office, we've created the theme, We All Belong. Uh, and so um, Dr. Presme Calix is working with different schools to help them create a welcoming and inclusive environment for all. Um, so parents need to feel welcome when they come into their child's school. Um, and not wait at the counter for someone to even look up. There's got to be a welcome when they come in. And then the Apple Project, um, advancing uh, parent professional leadership in education. Um, and then there's also uh, the MAP model. Um, there's biweekly workshops throughout the year uh, that are offered to families through the Family Academy and other community organizations that partner with um, family and parent engagement, and then uh, Infinite Campus there um, to create a hub for families at the community center to learn um, how to navigate um, the portal, because that is something that uh, parents, they do struggle with. So some of that work um, has started as well. Question. Yes. So um, you said the Apple Project, the grant ends in 2024. Mm -hmm. And this might be a bigger question for a regular school committee meeting, but I often, I often get concerned that we've built up such a great thing, yeah. artifact thing, whatever you want to call it, yep. and then the grant ends, 
And then I guess my question is, how do we ensure those dollars are in the next budgeting season so we don't lose all the hard work that we've done? You are speaking my language, Ms. Ehlers. Oh, That's great. <laughs> That's great. No. So yes. like, how does that, like, what is normally the process for that? Or mm -hmm. is that something that we need to talk about as a committee? I guess I'm just curious to ask, because yes. I see it ends yeah. and I'm like, what goes with it if we don't prepare? Mm -hmm. So. I don't, is that on my next one? Nope, it's not on, it's, it's on another slope. But it's on the one funding, before this, I think. Right, there's yep. no line of funding for family engagement okay. in our budget. And that, um, of course, needs to be fixed, and I would ask that the committee would consider um, that. Uh, it's running off of um, grants or collaboration with others, but there is no line item in the budget for family engagement. Okay, good to know, thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Community meetings and gatherings. So um, from the beginning, uh, I um, was getting lots of calls, you know, can we meet, I wanna know what you're doing kind of thing. And so I realized to save time, let's do a monthly meeting with everyone. Uh, and so um, that has also changed um, it, into a monthly meeting with our entire uh, department. Um, and now uh, Dr. Presume, um, is leading those meetings because it's just a natural fit with the work that she already does with the um, family and community. I'm gonna keep moving because I'm, I still have some more, but celebrate and collaborate. If you look here, um, again, EDI is not just in the walls of the district, but MLK breakfast, um, we see on the right uh, in this very building, Dr. Um, Robert C. Jones, our first black superintendent, was celebrated here in the middle is, uh, is AMSEL, the Association of Mass School Equity Leaders, the launch, um, and that is Governor Healy uh, in the middle. And so um, equity work is, is being launched statewide uh, and being supported statewide as well. <clears throat> and then on the left is our Dr. Amina Pilgrim, uh, and on the right is um, you know, our community members uh, and um, our internal folks. Uh, Mr. Williams and Dr. Michael Robinson on a St. Louis trip that we attended. Um, and some of what we've learned is being used, but we need to push that um, even more. Special projects, I'm really just gonna list these because of time. Um, the EDI team, um, resp the response team, we have uh, created that, and so it depends on what's going on in the district as to who we pull in for events or um, workshops that require more than just the few that are in the EDI office, uh, student equity councils and middle schools, the student ambassador program um, with Promise and BHS, and the hope is to expand that um, to Edison. Uh, schools, um, restorative justice circles, we've done them in those schools. Staff trainings for school culture, um, we'll also be doing a January professional development with the MTAs in Paris. Um, there was a training um, that I collaborated on with uh, Kelly Jones with Bilingual to train the administrative assistants in clerical pairs to create a, um, a a, an environment that welcomes families, uh, especially those who speak different languages. Um, I've been doing planning with the associates of uh, school climate and culture um, about leadership and uh, really helping them to problem solve. Uh, on my day at the high school, I'm there on Tuesdays. And then we're finalizing the poetry contest for all schools, planning for Black History Month. Uh, we provide cultural resources throughout the year, the EDI Glossary of Terms. This Saturday is the Right to Read event at the Brockton Public Library at 10 o'clock, uh, 10 to 1130. This is a national um, event and we are one of the few who is hosting in uh, Massachusetts. And then um, next uh, for me is to work on a Dad's Read project um, and videotaping fathers um, reading stories so that they can be used as resources um, in the classroom or with families. What is next? There needs to be a district-wide reorganization of family engagement and community engagement. Um, right now, um, it's in many different places. Um, and we need the funding for that work. Uh, we also need administrative support for that work. Um, and uh, I, I think that's it. I mean, we've, we've been working and trying to get the grants, but again, we want the work to continue um, when the grant is up. I'm just gonna move on to my next piece 
or at least queue up unless you have questions because I do want to get to this reflect course um, that we have. So if you look here, you have a, a booklet, uh, and this is, um, yeah, um, well, I don't know, because don't we have to start right at 7? No, it's okay. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you could. Okay. Are there any questions or concerns? Any questions or concerns on anything from the presentation? Um, the only thing that I would like to see is an actual structural map of how our EDI office should be structured. Um, if there's any other EDI offices within the Commonwealth yeah. and what that structure and how would that look for us. Okay. And then also the, um, the funding um, portion of that. Okay. Um, I, I'm confident, you know, mm -hmm. I don't want to you know, bite my tongue, but um, I, I believe strongly that moving forward with our budget hearings that you will be in front of this um, body presenting your budget as it should have been. Mm -hmm. um, so we're not dealing with no, no more financial crises, but I would like to see that sure. um, structure how it is. And then also just to piggyback off of the, uh, the funding mechanism when, we, when it comes to grants, I mean, that's something that we have to take a deeper dive into yep. where we have to put a pillow, um, depending upon what the number is and what we're dealing with, to make sure if that disappears that we do have um, some funding left over to actually support the, the hard work that's being done so it doesn't disappear. I agree. Okay. Thank you. I just had a few questions. Mm -hmm. um, so you mentioned the next level work on hiring policies. I was just wondering um, if that's a further conversation that you continue to have with school committee members on like, re can you hear me? Somewhat, I'm yeah, sorry, I was okay. giving you my back. Um, so the next level work on hiring policy specifically, is that something that you're collaborating specifically with the school committee to understand like what are the resources needed for that and how that work is looking or is needed? The hiring? Yeah, you mentioned ideally um, having EDI work, the next level work on hiring, um, supporting, right, the human resources on hiring policies. Did you mention that, right? So, yeah, c more collaboration with that. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm on um, every major, there's someone from my office, I'll say, on every major um, interview panel so that that um, is represented. Um, in terms of the hiring, I mean, the issue is, like teachers, I don't, I don't hire. They're hired at, at the school level. Right, and so I wouldn't be involved in that. Um, I think the hiring is probably more of the retention. My, my concern is really the retention. And um, I've been trying to collaborate um, statewide on what can we do about that? Because that's, there's a, a bill, and you're aware of the bill that's out there that's trying to keep um, a representation of the school body or student body in schools when there is a RIF, but that's like a larger thing. But again, it's a wish to, um, to have that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, also, I just wanted to ask about, um, you mentioned the ACT Conference. I just wondered how was participation at the ACT Conference? And um, yeah, how was participation at the ACT Conference? What do you mean, um, numbers? Or yeah, numbers, because um, mm -hmm. I know it's something um, strongly encouraged, yeah. um, but you know, I mean, if I don't feel feel like right. yeah, I could call out because I had those are my days yeah. personally so I just wonder if that's good participation how is it going so full transparency um, I've been informed 600 people called out sick for the act conference out of um, how much out of I don't know the 3,000 3,000 3, okay All right. yeah and then yeah. is there anything in structured like that principals can do some motivation or like how is that being advertised as something that's highly encouraged or is it required? How is it I mean, being it's advertised? a required work day, but people can take their sick days anytime. So it can be mandatory, but if you call out sick, you're entitled to the day. So I don't know what else, you know. For me, I would, I would just want to know if, if it's a group of, you know, a certain um, position that didn't feel like there was something available for them, I would want to know that because then we can structure things next year to make sure that they know that this is a, a good workshop for them. Um, if it's a large number at a specific school, then that's a school culture issue. And so I'm trying to um, look into that um, just so that I understand how I need to pivot next year. Yeah. Or is what work needs to be done now. Is there space other than 
in regards to feedback, is there space given, not immediate feedback, but after that people, that um, employees are able to give? Yeah, so the professional development department um, requires that there is a survey um, in order to get the PDP. Um, PDPs. Okay, points, so in yeah. that survey they give feedback mm -hmm. in regards to, mm -hmm. okay, so that's important to fill out. Yeah. And then I had a question about the student interns. Um, so it sounds like it's a paid internship mm -hmm. opportunity and it's fully inform informs them, like you mentioned, the, the student that said that it gave them an extra edge. Mm -hmm. um, also, like, is this Where's the access in this? Like, do I know that I can apply for this or, and how? Yeah, so it was sent out to um, all of the high schools uh, and whoever applied, they were interviewed. Okay. So if they, you know, um, follow through. Because some people might start an application, they don't complete it. So, but if people completed it, they were interviewed. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I just find, is it like something that people are encouraging, you know, others to like apply versus just giving an eight. That's just like yeah. an ad. Yeah. That's just me like speaking. I understand. Because I understand how students operate mm -hmm. sometimes. Um, and then, yeah, I know the budget line sounds like um, something that we'll definitely mm -hmm. um, consider. Mm -hmm. um, yes, go ahead and. All right, you I'm going to try to Sorry. do this quickly. We'll see. But um, you, you see this booklet here, um, our high school um, printing department. Thanks to Nate Bright, uh, he printed this out for us, which is great. Um, there, this is a workbook. Um, there's also an online component that is a fillable PDF uh, that goes with this because inside you'll see that there are videos, um, video links in red that are clickable. So um, this is a follow-up from the implicit explicit bias um, protocol that was created last year. Uh, and the issue was when um, there is, you know, an employee that says something that's inappropriate, while that investigation is happening, they are on leave and there's some work that needs to be done or could be done while they are away with students um, as well as, you know, the work that they should be doing um, instead of someone um, coming in and they, they do some work with our human resources um, and then they come back to the classroom, but there needs to be more of a restorative approach. approach. Uh, so this is a course um, that I've been working on um, for the past several months. Uh, it's called Reflect, A Path Towards Healing Harm. And there are six modules. The first one is self-awareness, understanding your own, next, um, understanding your own identity and bias, valuing diversity, managing the dynamics of differences, rejoining the community, establishing a habit of reflective practices. So I open it up with asking folks to have a growth mindset, and I define what that is, um, because you know, often if you are required to take this course, you're, you know, there's some feelings, and I, I want people to learn. If um, there is a restorative opportunity, um, then let's really do it. So the first module, um, you need to reflect on the incident, you need to um, be more aware, and you're reflecting on how your actions affect others. Um, there's the uh, Prowse questionnaire that helps you understand what makes you happy, what frustrates you, and that can really get under why we react the way that we do in tense situations. Um, it's become pretty popular with some of the um, movie stars out there, they actually take it as well. <laughs> uh, the next one is understanding my own biases, um, identities and biases. So I go through what it means um, to have an implicit and, ex and an explicit bias, talking about the differences. Uh, I take them through the cycle of socialization, the cycle of liberation. Um, they also do the social identity wheel uh, for themselves and they get into their own cultural identity. Module three, uh, understanding what the melting pot actually is. Um, understanding Brockton, so I pull out our own Brockton statistics um, so that they can understand who is actually in our district, the languages that are spoken. Um, there's a video in there about the origin of race. How was it even created? Um, what's, what's behind all of that? 
Uh, and then what is systemic racism? Because there's a lot of terminology that can be um, thrown around in the conversation and folks don't understand what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So they need to understand the language. Uh, and then on the right are, um, based on the languages that we have um, in our uh, district, um, I go through the different cultures and also speak about white culture as well. And then module four, managing the dynamics of differences. Um, what are microaggressions? Uh, I call them assaults on dignity. It's been redefined by other researchers as such. Uh, cultural competence. Um, culturally revel relevant and culturally responsive, the difference and similarities. There's an article in there. Um, what does it mean to step out of privilege? And what does it mean to call someone in versus calling them out? Mm. Module five, returning to the community. So this is the restorative approach. Um, and then you first have to define what are restorative practices? Um, what are circles and what's the purpose of them and the features of them? Then the language of apology. Um, I realize this, as I'm putting these things in there, you could really cause more harm if you don't apologize the right way. Uh, for those of us who are married, you understand what I'm talking about. And so the language of apology is defined in there um, and you know, really understanding people and using the right apology goes a long way. Um, then just as the individual did the social identity wheel on their own, they will do some work with the students. The students do the identity wheel on their own so that they're prepared for the um, return of the educator so that they can have a conversation, an informed conversation. Um, and they, um, this last piece, what my teacher should know is a piece that I learned from our student interns. They, um, I asked them as I was writing this, what, how would you want a teacher to return to your class after um, you know, causing harm, uh, and this is what they wanted their teachers to know. So there's quotes that I use in the book um, directly from them. Module six, establishing a habit of reflective practice. This is a framework um, that I've created as part of my doctoral work. Um, I just tweaked it a little bit just for this book, but um, there's an opportunity for you as you write about the incident um, you just free write, it's, it's guided, and then you put the paper away, um, and then you come back and read it as a reader. And for those of you who read, you look at um, characters in a book, and you say, wow, you can see some issues that characters have, um, and then you reflect again on that. Uh, and I give six pages of that so that um, you can establish a habit of reflective practices and do no more harm. Um, and these are the three rounds that will happen when a teacher returns. Um, this is the restorative process. How were you harmed by the incident that took place? That's one question. The next one is what identity is most important to you and how would you feel if that identity wasn't valued in the school community? And then the next, was there something that was said or needs to be said that will help you move forward so that the class can go back to learning but we have to acknowledge what actually happened. And that's it. Um, I did this training for our principals so that they would understand how to support um, a classroom when this kind of thing happens. Uh, so that was the last piece, we'll, but we're not gonna practice today. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions you. or no. comments? Wonderful, thank you. Yeah, I just wanna say this is awesome. Like yeah. for that person that, that cre did harm, but also just for personal reference to use and Mm -hmm. to work, do the work. This is very informative and just very well thought out. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you for thank the you. book, the sure. free book. <laughs> thank you. Any other questions or concerns? No. Nope. All right. All right. <laughs> thank you so much, Dr. Haywood. Um, other business? All right. Can we get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. This meeting has ended. Thank, thank you very you. much.